The rate of a chemical reaction is dependent on many different factors. Uh, concentration, surface area, temperature, whether or not you use a catalyst. But every chemical reaction has its own base rate of reaction. And this is dependent entirely on the nature of the reactants. What exactly is it are you reacting? Does it involve ionic bonds or does it involve covalent bonds? Here's a simple example. We're going to take some sodium carbonate solution. and add to it some cobalt chloride solution. Notice how it's transparent. When the two solutions are reacted with each other, you instantly get a precipitate. In fact, the color does change. Look at that. This chemical reaction took place instantly. And the reason why it took place instantly is because the ionic bonds of the reacting chemicals were previously broken by the addition of water. Water broke the ionic bonds to allow the ions to flow freely throughout the mixture. And the second the cobalt and the carbonate came into contact with each other, they, being insoluble, formed a blue crystal, well, trillions upon trillions of blue crystals, which made the solution cloudy. Watch what happens when I pass a laser through it. You could actually see the path of the laser beam because of the crystals. Here you can actually even see the crystals close up. Watch what happens when I shine the laser through it. It's pretty cool, isn't it? The reason why the laser beam can be seen is because the particles in there are so large that they reflect light very well, allowing you to see them. So that's an ionic reaction, extremely fast. Now if I had tried to carry this out with solid cobalt chloride and sodium carbonate, the reaction would have even gotten started because you'd have to add enough heat to get the compounds to melt to break the ions apart. So in this case, this reaction took place at room temperature because of the addition of a catalyst, water. The catalyst water acts to break apart the ions so that the reaction can proceed. Without the water, there'd be no reaction, and therefore, no reaction rate. What we're going to do to demonstrate how slow covalent reactions take place compared to what you just saw up there, I'm going to take sucrose, which is also known as table sugar, C6, well, no, it's C12H22O11. Three nonmetals making the bond what? You got it. Okay, now what we're going to do to add to it is some hydrogen sulfate, also known as concentrated sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Johnny was a chemist. Johnny is no more. What Johnny thought was H2O uh, 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 was H2SO4. And here's why Johnny is now dead. What this sulfuric acid is about to do to the sugar is what it would do to you if you got it on you. Yes. <laughs> do not try this at home. Right, no promises. So if, if you spilled it on you, would it just burn through you? Yeah. Oh, what else? Wait, wait. You, what would I burn through? So that, yeah, that stuff. What's happening? It's turning more. It's turning into caramel. You got digested. Well, you're car you're car caramelizing it. It's so exactly what's happening. So you don't want to eat that caramel? No, this is definitely caramel you don't want any part of. There's a little excess sulfuric acid in there, so I'm going to put a little bit more sugar in to get this going. What happens if you suck it? <laughs> this. That. Oh, oh, like it steams and boils? Oh, but just wait. How did you like, oh, um, like what's it. called, like, like, like oh, breathing that air? It's, it's carbon. Oh, okay. it's Oh no, it's gonna burn through the table. Are you right now? <laughs> no. Like, Sam, go and put your mouth over that. <gasps> That's actually pretty stupid. Oh, wow. <laughs> what happened to it? It became a rock. It's carbonized. Yeah, you see that? It kind of foamed up, increased in volume. Why is your video? What happens is this, guys. Sulfuric acid is what's called a dehydrating agent. It removes water from whatever it can. 
And if there's no water there, it'll tear hydrogen and oxygen atoms off of any molecule to make water. Now, sugar has about a two to one ratio of hydrogen to oxygen. As a result, when you pull the hydrogen and oxygen off, it forms water vapor. Vapor because this reaction is really hot. That's why you get the foaminess. That's why the volume increased the way it did. Because the water vapor actually caused this whole thing to foam up. If you take sugar, C12, H22O11, and remove the hydrogen and oxygen from it, what's the only thing that's left? So that's just carbon? That's pure carbon right there. With some residue of unused sulfuric acid in it. Oh, I want that. Is it like... Isn't that cold? Basically.